In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you could build a end-to-end -end project in bioinformatics, where we will be building a machine learning model to predict the antimicrobial activity of a set of antimicrobial peptides. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is head over to the GitHub of the data professor, and then you wanna download the Jupyter Notebook. And so I'm gonna provide you the links in the video description. And once you have opened up the notebook, you will see this. And so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing Conda. And so it's going to be installing Python 3.7. And so this should take a short moment. All right, and so it's finished. And we're going to now download the P feature. And what P feature will allow us to do is to compute the properties of amino acids, which will be crucial for quantifying the molecular properties of peptides. And so a little bit about peptides before we begin. Peptides are short stretches of amino acid chain, meaning that there's several amino acids that are linked together into a chain-like. And such amino acid could range in the size from at least two, which is essentially a dipeptide, meaning there's two amino acids, or it could go as big as 50 or more amino acids linked together. And so this is known as the peptide. And so in this video, we're going to be focusing on short peptides that has antimicrobial activity. And so the P feature library in Python will allow us to compute the molecular properties of the peptide, which we will be using as the features that will then serve as the basis for the construction of the machine learning model. Okay, so let's download that from the GitHub. And this is coming from the research group of Professor Rakhava. And let's unzip it. And then we're going to go into the P feature folder. And then we're going to be installing it by using Python setup.py install. So unfortunately, the P feature library is not yet available on pip. And so we're going to be installing it manually. All right, and so now it's installed. And so the reason why we downloaded Conda earlier on is to be able to install the CD hit library. And so what CD hit will allow us to do is it will allow us to filter out any redundancy in the peptide sequences meaning that peptides that are very much similar will be removed. And so we're going to be getting a non-redundant or a unique subset of peptides that we will be using for the model building. And so we can simply install it using conda install dash C bioconda CD hit dash Y. All right, and we're good to go. And so now we're going to be downloading the peptide data set. Let's run the two cells here. And so for your convenience, I've uploaded the data set that I've obtained from the authors here, and I put it onto the GitHub of Data Professor. And so you could easily download it directly from the notebook as shown here. And so you could have access to the original data set right here by clicking on this button. And so as you can see, we're going to be making use of the short antimicrobial peptides, and we're going to be making use of only the training data set. And so I'll leave it up to you guys as your homework to build the model on the training data set and then predicting it on the test data set. But in this tutorial, we're going to be using only the trained data set, which we will be using to further subset into a 80-20 split. And then we're going to be building the model from there. And so this data set was obtained from the paper here. And the paper is published right here in the molecular therapy nucleic acids. And so you could feel free to read the full paper. And the P feature library in Python was obtained from this GitHub repository. And it's actually inside this folder, PyLib. And it's actually this file, pfeature.zip. Feel free to browse around this repo in order to have a look at the further information about the amino acid properties that this library will be able to compute. So actually, there's a feature documentation right here and also a manual, which will provide you with further information. And actually, in this notebook, I'm going to be showing you in just a moment a list of all of the amino acid properties that the P feature library can compute. And so wait just a moment. 
All right, so here we have already downloaded the training positive data set in the fast A format and also the training negative data set also in the fast A format. And so fast A format is essentially an ASCII text file that contains several rows of peptide sequences. And so actually, before we begin, I can show you the contents of that. So let's have a look at the FASTA file here. And so you're going to be seeing here that, let's have a look at the top, but actually it doesn't matter. So each sequence will be beginning with the identification number or the identification name shown here. Okay, so here you're going to be seeing the name of the peptide followed by the peptide sequence. And the peptide sequence here is denoted in single letter amino acid, meaning that each letter that you see here will denote a single amino acid. And so M here stands for methionine, S stands for serine, M is methionine, G glycine, I is isoleucine, A is alanine, R is arginine, P is proline, and etc. So I'll provide you with a link to the list of the amino acid acronym and its full name or actually i could also write that down in the video description just for your reference and so let's have a look at the positive data sets and same thing here you're going to be seeing the peptide name followed by the peptide sequence and so amp here stands for antimicrobial peptide and the file earlier that we have seen it's denoted by non-AMP, which means that there's no antimicrobial activity. Okay, so positive means that there is antimicrobial activity. Negative means that there is no antimicrobial activity. Okay, so here we're going to be removing redundant sequences from the data set from the FASTA file here. And we're going to be doing that using the CD hit software. And so this is standard protocol for performing machine learning model building using peptide data set, where we will be removing redundant sequences, having high peptide similarity greater than 0.99. We will be removing those redundant peptides. And so the threshold here could be set to a lower number, thereby we will be removing less similar peptides and so you can feel free to play around with this threshold value here. And so we're going to be using 0 0.99. And so after running, you're going to be seeing that there was a total of 1,445 sequences or peptides. Let's do that for the negative set. And also 1,445. And so you're going to be seeing that after running CD hits, we have this file generated as specified here in the output. Okay, so we have the train underscore NE underscore CD hit dot TXT. Same thing, we also have train underscore PO underscore CD hit dot TXT, which is for the positive data set and also for the negative data sets. And so a point you note here is that the positive data set and the negative data set will be used for the model building, whereby the positive data set and negative data set will be merged into a single data set, whereby the peptides having the positive label and peptides having the negative label will be in the same data set. And so we're going to be doing a binary classification using scikit-learn, which will be classifying the aggregated or the combined data set, whether the peptide will be a positive or a negative toward the antimicrobial activity. Okay, so let's proceed further. And so here we're using the bash commands using the grab function in order to see the number of lines in the file. And so we're going to be seeing here that after we have performed the CD hit, the number of peptides that are remaining are shown here.
Okay, so after CD hit, we have 1337. After CD hit for the negative data set, we have 1422. And so a point of note here is that now after performing CD hit, the number of peptides here are differing between the two data subsets. And so for the simplicity of this tutorial, we're not going to be considering the possible effects of the class imbalance on the model building process. And so you are more than welcome to try that out, meaning that you could build a model without performing the CD hits and then compare that with the model after performing CD hits, whether there is any significant difference in the model performance. But for robustness, I highly recommend performing the CD hit in order to remove any sequence redundancy. Otherwise, the model could be biased. Okay, so I've actually created this summary table here using information from the manual that I've mentioned earlier on that I downloaded from the GitHub. And so this is a summary table of all of the peptide features that we can compute using the P feature library. And so you can see here that there are, let's see, let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there is a large collection of 19 different peptide features. And so in this tutorial, we're going to be showing only the first two, and you are more than welcome to try out all of this as well. And if you do implement any other features shown here, please drop a comment to your GitHub repository, and perhaps I can combine all of your coding implementation, particularly for this part here, the custom function for computing each of these peptide features into the same notebook here. And so that might require quite some time. However, if each of us contribute a unique peptide feature, I think we could do that much faster. And actually, I could have done that for you, but then that would also delay the release of this video. And so why don't we help each other out by each taking a peptide feature, implementing it, and then sharing the GitHub, and then I can combine it, and then I'll provide the combined data sets, meaning the combined notebook, and I'll share it in the comments of this video. And so I'll thank you all for your future contribution. And so this is a collaborative video, and I greatly appreciate your help. And let's continue. All right, and so now we're going to be importing pandas as PD, and then we're going to be implementing the amino acid composition feature here. So from pfeature.pfeature, .p -feature, we're going to be importing the AACWP. And so the AACWP here refers to the whole protein or whole peptide. And so you're going to be able to calculate the amino acid composition for the entire protein or the entire peptide. Because in P feature, there is more than one type of peptide features that you can compute. You could compute the peptide features that are at the end terminal, meaning that it is at the beginning of the peptide sequence, or it will compute the peptide features toward the end of the peptide. And so end terminal is toward the beginning of the peptide, and C terminal means that it is the features toward the end of the peptide. But then the WP here means that we're going to be computing the properties for the entire peptide. Okay, so this is for all 19 here. And so if we take into consideration that we're able to compute the N terminal or the C terminal, we're going to be able to have more than 19 different peptide features here. And that could add up to more, maybe more than 60 or 70. And so this shows you that in the context of implementing a research project such as this one, we will be having to make lots of decisions that might either simplify the project or make the project much more comprehensive, and that will require more experiments and more calculations. Okay, so for simplicity of this tutorial, we're going to be limiting to the entire protein or the entire peptide. And we're only going to be focusing on the amino acid composition and the dipeptide composition. And so the amino acid composition here will refer to the percent composition of each of the 20 amino acids that are containing inside the peptide sequence. For an instance, if we have a peptide shown above here, for this peptide, I'm going to be counting how many methionine is in the peptide. In other words, how many M do we have here? Let's do that. We have one, two, and so we have two. So what's the length of the peptide? I think it's about 30 amino acids. 
let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so I think it's 30 amino acids. And so if there's two methionine, then the ratio is two out of 30. And so I'll compute the percentage of that. Let's do it. We could use this as a calculator. So 2 out of 30 will give us 0.06, and that will account for 6% of the entire peptide. Okay, so I'll do that for the 19 other amino acids, and therefore you're going to be getting the percent composition of each of the 20 amino acids in your desired peptide. And a dipeptide composition will mean the combination of two amino acids. And so there's going to be a combination of 400 different dipeptides because there are 20 amino acids. And if we have two position, we're going to have 20 times 20, and that will give you 400. And so therefore there will be 400 possible dipeptides. Okay. So let's implement this and let's have a look. Amino acid composition. All right, and here we go. We have 20 amino acid and therefore we will be having 20 columns. Okay, and here we have 13, 37, number of rows, and each row will represent a unique peptide. And so this is the peptide for the positive data sets. Let's do that for the positive and the negative data set. So we're going to be applying the AAC function here that we have just defined. And then we're going to be calculating the amino acid composition for both the positive data sets and also for the negative data sets. And before doing that, let's have a look at the function. Okay, so here we're defining a custom function to compute the amino acid composition. And then we're starting to implement this by importing the AACWP function from the pfeature.p feature. And then here we're defining the custom function, DEF, and then we have AAC, which is the acronym for amino acid composition. And then the input will be the FASTA file that we have mentioned earlier on after performing the CD hit. And so the extension of the file will be TXT. And so what we do is we're going to be taking the TXT from the file name. Here we have the name as train underscore ne underscore cdhit.txt and also train underscore po underscore cdhit.txt and so we're going to be stripping the .txt from the name therefore we're going to be having this name right here okay and then we're going to be adding aac at the end okay at the end of the name so we're essentially renaming the file and then the output will be here here, we're using the AACWP here to calculate and input here is the file and then output is here, the name of the output file. Okay, so essentially the AACWP function will calculate the amino acid composition by using the input argument of input and output. And so this is the input file and then it will be spitting out the output file. And after we have computed the amino acid composition, we will be reading it in to pandas using the read CSV function where the output is the input argument. And then we're going to be returning the output at the end of this function here, okay? So running the AAC, the input is the peptide sequence file that has been pre-processed by CDHIT, and then it will be generating an output file that has the extension aac.csv at the end of this prefix of the file name, okay? And so the same thing will be for the dipeptide composition. And let's proceed to running here. And so we're going to be using the AAC or the DPC in combination with this new custom function here. And so this new custom function is called feature calculator or feature calc. And so it's going to be taking as input argument three here. The first one is the positive data set. The second is the negative data set. And then which feature do you want to compute? And so it's right here. The positive data set 
the negative data set. Pause is right here. It's defined here. And neg is right here. And this is the negative data set. And then which feature to calculate. And so we input either AAC or DPC. And so let's actually run AAC because it's much quicker. And I'll leave it to you guys to run the DPC. And this will be taking a bit longer. Okay. So here, let me start over again. We're defining a positive data set and a negative data set by using the name of the peptide sequence and assigning it to positive and negative. And then we define a custom function, which will essentially perform the following. So based on the amino acid or the dipeptide function that you want to use, it's right here. And so if we use AAC, it will be performing the AAC calculation. Or if we use DPC defined here, it will be using the DPC calculation instead right here on the positive data sets and also on the negative data sets. Afterwards, we will be getting the features for the positive data sets and the features for the negative data sets. And then we're going to be creating a new column called positive class and negative class. And so the class label here will be first combined together. Okay, so it will essentially be stacked on top of one another. And afterwards, we're going to be combining it side by side, meaning that the features and the class will then combine side by side. In order to get a final data frame, which will contain the peptide features. In this example, the amino acid composition, followed by the last column, which will be the class label of either being positive or negative. So it might be a bit difficult to visualize that. So I'm going to be showing you that right now. Let's run this cell. And so here you see that you have the 20 amino acids followed by the last column, which we have created and it has two possible values, positive and negative. Okay, so we have already generated the class label, positive or negative in this step right here. Okay, so for the positive data set, we're generating the positive values here. And for the negative data set, we added the negative values here. And then afterwards, we use pd.concat to combine the positive and negative into the same column. And so it's using an axis of zero, meaning that it will be stacked on top of one another that you see here. So you see that the positive is on top of the negative. And so this is made possible by using axis equals to zero. And now that we have positive and negative class labels, combined in the same column, we will then be combining using pdconcat again, but then this time we're using axis equals to one. And it means that we're going to be combining the data frames here side by side. And so to the left will be here, the 20 columns of the amino acid composition. And then to the right will be the class label column here. And now we have a data frame of 21. Okay, so feel free to run each of this one by one, meaning line by line, so that you will grasp the concept of what is happening as the data is being transformed. Okay, so I want to make note here that feature name here is the same as running this calculation, AACPOS. Okay, it's the same thing. Yes, yeah, same thing as running here, AAC and then the name of the input file. Okay, right, because we define the name of the input file by POS. So I'm using POS here, or actually we could also do this as well. Right, same thing. Okay, and so it's going to be taking this and then putting it inside here as the input argument. And so for feature name, if we define it to be AAC, it will be AAC here. But if the feature name is defined to be DPC, then this part will be DPC. Okay. Let's move forward. And so here, pointy note here is that in the next step, we're going to be splitting the amino acid features here, the peptide feature, the 20 columns into X, and then the class label column here will be the Y. And then we're going to be using these X and Y for scikit-learn model building. And so let's show it here. 
So that's the feature that we have computed earlier on. And now we're going to be splitting it into X and Y. And then we're using the drop function to drop the class column. And then we're using the copy function here and then only the feature class here. So we're taking only the class column and then assigning it to Y. And now we have X and Y. All right. And then we're encoding the positive to be one and negative to be zero. And let's have a look at the shape of the X and we have the combined 2759 right here. And so they are 2,759 peptides comprising of both positive and negative in the same data frame. Okay, and so now we're going to be removing features that have low variance from the data set, and then we're assigning it to X2. And let's see how many features have been removed. And you can see here that none of the features were removed. But if you were to use the DPC features, there might be some features being removed. And so that is your homework. And let me know in the comments how did that work out. And here we're going to be splitting the data set into 80-20 using 0 0.2, 80-20, and then using a random state of 42. And then we're also going to be splitting it using stratify equals to y, meaning that the ratio of the active to inactive will be maintained during the data splitting. All right. And so let me show you the use of the lazy predict so that we could quickly build more than 30 machine learning algorithms or more than 30 machine learning models. So actually, I've implemented again the data split inside the following block of code here. Okay, so installation should take a moment. Okay, so I hope it works. And so let's try running this. Okay, so we haven't defined Matthew's correlation. All right, let's define it. Did I define it somewhere else? Yeah, it's right here. So let's define it here as well. Okay, so it works. So we're importing the necessary libraries right here. And so we've also split it to data set again, X and Y into X and Y. And then we perform the data split into 8020. And then here we define the CLF using the lazy classifier because here we're performing a binary classification. And we're going to be using a custom metric called Matthews correlation coefficient. And so Matthews correlation coefficient will efficiently handle any class imbalance when computing the model performance. And afterwards, we're going to be fitting the model using the four data subsets in order to get the predictions for the training set and also for the testing set. And now let's have a look at the performance of the training set. Okay, so it's pretty good. Matthew's correlation is 0 0.86, and we have it for the random forest. Now let's have a look at the test set. Okay, so here, it seems that the model test is not working. That is taking zero seconds to run. What if I don't run this one? Okay. It seems to work if I run it without the train and I run only the test. It seems to work. All right, there you go. It works now. Okay. So probably we might need to run it separately. Okay, so you probably could do something like this. You could run it separately. Okay, so we have the train and we have the test. And now it's working. Okay, and so we will proceed further. So we're going to be using the train.
Okay, so this is the plot for the accuracy and this is the plot for the Matthews correlation coefficients. And so, you know, we just have to figure. So let's proceed further. All right, and so now we're going to be building the random forest model. And so we're using the random forest classifier and then we're assigning it to RF. And here we define it to have a N estimator of 500 and then we're fitting the model using X train and Y train. And let's make the prediction on the training set and also on the testing set or the 80 and the 20 subset. So this is the feature class column and let's compute the accuracy in the easy way and we're going to be using the rf.score and so the input argument will be x test and y test and so what it will do is it will apply the trained rf model to make a prediction on the test data set and it will compute the accuracy score or also Instead of doing here, we could do the manual way where we have to make the prediction shown here, we make the prediction, and then we separately store it into two separate variables. Okay, one for the trained prediction and one for the test prediction using the rf.predict, input argument x train, saving it here, y train pred. And then using rf.predict on the x test and then saving it separately in y test spread. And then we're going to be making use of it here as the input argument in order to get the accuracy score. And also, what's good is that we could also use the same input argument and compute the Matthews correlation coefficient and others as well, like the confusion matrix as well. Okay, so let's do that. We have the accuracy, and so you can see that you're getting the same results. And let's compute the Matthews correlation here, 0.4. Confusion matrix. Okay. Classification reports. And it's actually going to be saving it into a file. And it's going to be inside the P feature. And so the model report will be here. We'll go into this file. And then we double click on it. And this is what we get. Okay, so you have a column of precision, recall, F1 score, and supports. And it has to be computed separately for the positive and the negative subsets. Okay. Let's calculate the RLC curve. And here we're using the plot RLC curve function. And so a single line here using the input argument of RF, which is the model, the random forest model, and then X test and Y test. Okay. So if you want to make it for the training sets, we could also do it like here. Change this to train, change this to train. Okay, so that's for the training sets. And so we have the area under the curve of 0 0.99 for the training sets. And for the test set, we have area under the curve of 0 0.74. All right, let's do some feature importance plots. So this is our data frame. Let's use the Gini index to compute the importance and let's show it. So that's the Gini score and let's make a plot. And so this plot will show the mean decrease in the Gini index. Okay, so you're going to be seeing the most important feature at the top and then the least important feature at the bottom. And so here we see that the top five features that are important are lysine, 
which is K, D is aspartic acid, E is glutamic acid, L is leucine, and G is glycine. Okay, so these five are performing very well in the model performance. They're the most important five features in the random forest model. Okay, so that's all for this notebook. So if you're finding value in this video and you want to help out this channel, please feel free to smash the like button, share this video to your friend, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of the next video as soon as it comes out. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.